Skeptics often claim that Jesus made a mistake when he referred to the mustard seed as the smallest seed, and they base their objections on the words of Jesus as found in um, two different Gospels. The first is Mark chapter 4, verses 30 through 31. Here Jesus said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed which you plant in the ground. And then the second comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 through 32. Here Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all of your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. Um, Luke 17, 6 also mentions the mustard seed, but it um, really doesn't give us the details like these two Gospels do. So how should we respond as Christians? As usual, there are at least three things that I think we should consider. Number one, we should point out that these words fit within a particular context. This is a conversation between Jesus and a first century Jew. You may have noticed uh, my emphasis on some of the words as I was reading those um, gospel passages. Contextually, Jesus is not speaking to every farmer in the world. So he speaks of the smallest seed you plant in the ground, the smallest of your seeds. Again, Jesus is not speaking of every seed in the world. He's talking to a specific person, and the mustard seed um, was the smallest seed that a first century Jewish farmer would have planted or sown into the ground. Secondly, Jesus is not giving botany lessons here. He's giving theology lessons. And this parable would have made absolutely no sense if Jesus had mentioned the smallest seed in the world. The farmers of this time and place, they just weren't familiar with this type of seed. So instead, Jesus uses the mustard seed, which helped them understand uh, or to make sense of the parable or the theological truth that he was communicating. And then lastly, serious Bible students should want to understand the intended meaning of this passage. We want to understand what Jesus actually meant by this text. The Bible, like any other document, um, can be uh, twisted, manipulated. You, you can make it say really whatever you want it to if you try hard enough. And, and, and really, this is not exactly something that you want to do with God's Word. So, again, we approach the text by asking what did Jesus have in mind here? You know, our culture is disconnected completely from the first century uh, Jews in many ways. And even our contemporary culture today, you know, people only a few miles apart have these linguistic barriers. For example, someone today might say, get out of here. But they're, they're not telling you to get out of here, really. They, what they mean is, no way. Uh, on the flip side, someone might say, take a hike. <laughs> and, and they don't mean a literal hike across the mountains. They do mean you should get out of here. Get lost. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yet we would never insist that someone telling us to take a hike literally wanted us to go on a hiking expedition across the entire world. We might ask some clarifying questions if we really wanted to understand what exactly are you talking about? You know, what do you, what do you mean by this phrase? You know, hopefully we, we would want to understand what they were saying. And if this is the case in our day-to-day -day conversations, how much more should we attempt to understand God's Word? In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, Jesus is speaking to a specific person, a first-century Jewish farmer, and he uses this illustration of a mustard seed to communicate a theological truth. To object by bringing up the smallest seed in the world misses both points entirely. So I hope that helps. I hope that prepares you for the next time you run across this objection. This is Owen Giles with Radical Truth. Until next time, blessings.